Have you ever imagined what it'd be like to be an emperor? You could build castles, buildings, churches and monuments, anything you wanted. But what if, as an emperor, you could see these buildings thousands of years after their initial construction? Would you be happy to see that they have changed, been rebuilt or modified in some way? Perhaps not, but this is what happened to our dear friend, Empress Galla Placidia. Nobilissima was born in 392 AD in Constantinople. She was one of the most powerful women in the world. An empress, daughter of an emperor, sister to emperors, wife to emperors, and mother to emperors. Galla Placidia became the regent of the Western Roman Empire in 423 AD in Ravenna, Italy. Ravenna was a special city. It was chosen for defensive reasons by Placidia's brother 21 years earlier as the new capital of the Western Roman Empire. However, the city's landscape lacked any sense of grandeur or majesty. In an attempt to remedy this, all the following emperors built many monuments in Ravenna. Placidia also commissioned the construction of buildings and churches, but only one remains intact, her mausoleum. The mausoleum belonged to the Church of Santa Croce, built by Galla Placidia in 420 AD. It formed one of two chapels, together with the mausoleum of her niece Singleda, placed at the far end of the church's narthex. Placidia never saw the finished building, and it has never housed her remains, with the result that she must wonder what has happened to the tomb since the last time that she saw it. After its completion in 452 AD, the complex slowly changed. First Singleda's mausoleum went to ruins, then the entire complex sunk due to the subsistence phenomenon, and after that, there were various alterations to the single buildings. In 1600 AD, the mausoleum underwent one of the most shocking changes caused by monks from the nearby church of San Vitale. They wanted to build a road to pass between the mausoleum and the church of Santa Croce, and for this reason, they destroyed what remained of the narthex. The monks then pulled back the front of the church by 11 metres and incorporated Placidia's mausoleum within their own monastery, separating it from the street with a wall. On their new mausoleum, the monks then removed the Roman lintel above the original door, created another door, built a lumber store, and finally, because they didn't like the way the brick looked, decided to paint over it all. Towards the end of 1600 AD, the first travellers, the grand tourists, started to visit Ravenna. The mausoleum, transformed and derelict as it was, full of weeds, snakes and often flooded, was the destination of many travellers. However, they were not put off by the poor condition the mausoleum was left in. Instead, they were disappointed by the artistic features of the mosaics and tombs, which lacked any sense of three-dimensional quality. Luckily, the mausoleum did not undergo any substantial change until 1800 AD. But, get ready Gala, in this same period, the emergence of restorative practices draws attention to the tracks of the past, and our poor mausoleum, altered so many times throughout the centuries, starts to gain the interest of the first restorers. A Roman engineer, Filippo Lanciani, was the first restorer to concern himself with the monument's state of disrepair. He oversaw the excavation that revealed the rest of the church's narthex and proposed to lift the mausoleum by the three meters it had sunk. This was a source of controversy and, eventually, led to Lanciani's dismissal. Following his return to Rome, his place was taken by the engineer Renuzzi. He removed the structures added by the monks and replaced the perimeter wall with a gate. The confusion surrounding restorative intervention at that time on many monuments all over Italy led to the inception of the first Commission for Cultural Heritage, which was founded by Corrado Ricci in 1897, right there in Ravenna itself. Ricci tried to give back the authentic image of the mausoleum to the visitors, filling any gaps on the monument's exterior, for example, reinserting the Roman frieze. However, he did remove the altar added in 1706 and added some new decorative elements, like alabaster glass to the windows and yellow marble to the interior walls. The mausoleum's appearance has remained largely the same in recent years, 
But as we have seen, it has changed significantly since its initial conception. Everything has a history. The ability to read the historical layers belonging to works allows us to travel through time, and we cannot pretend that such monuments are preserved in glass cases from creation to present. While Galla Placidia may never see the mausoleum as it is today, finally it has been completed like she wanted. It has managed to live a life of its own, developing, changing and preserving itself so that it could reach us like a wonderful jewel from one of her many crowns. <laughs>